Are you looking to begin your credit card journey? Don't answer that, you're watching this video. So I'll take that as a yes. Since you're all here for the same reason, here's my 2024 updated guidance on how to begin your credit card journey. First, say no to Chase credit cards and yes to Capital One. More specifically, these two credit cards, the Capital One Quicksilver and the Capital One Saver One. I'm gonna explain why Capital One should be your credit card issuer of choice at the start of your credit card journey. For those new to the channel, I'm Richard Debs and I'm an avid traveler. To that end, I currently hold over 20 active credit cards. I'm certainly not recommending that any of you be as crazy as me. However, having so many active credit cards has allowed me to make this video because I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I wasn't always a traveler. I was likely where you are today, not knowing where to begin with credit cards. I recall being at the cash register at The Gap where they were offering a discount to customers who were prepared to sign up on the spot. I'm thinking, you're gonna give me a credit card and a discount on my underwear? Score, folks. That's how I got started. However, you will never do that. You will be intentional and discriminating when it comes to applying for credit cards. So please pay close attention to learn how to get started with credit cards. I've structured this video into five sections so you may jump around as needed and rewatch sections for a fuller and deeper understanding. Section one, cashback versus points. You've likely heard and seen these concepts being thrown around, but you're not too sure what they mean. I've got you. After this video, you may now brag about your newfound knowledge to your friends or simply share this video. Section two, strategic planning when applying for credit cards. Credit cards offer way more than just being a convenient method of payment. They offer monetary value, so we need to be smart about which ones to apply for. Section three, why begin with Capital One cards? I have over 20 credit cards, which is not necessary for the average person. But by doing so, this wealth of experience has allowed me to provide guidance to those starting out. Section four, why avoid Chase cards as a starter set? This is controversial because many folks here on YouTube tout Chase without context. But I'll show you why Chase is a phase two and not a phase one setup. Section five, bonus strategy. Watch until the end and I'll disclose a bonus card which is super valuable, especially in these beginning stages. Strap in folks, here we go. Section one, cashback versus points. Let's begin with cashback. What does it mean when a credit card offers cashback? If a credit card states that you will earn 2% cashback on all purchases, that means that whenever you swipe your card, you should expect to earn 2% of the purchase price as a bonus, which will be added to your account's cashback pool. For example, if you were to shop for groceries at a supermarket, totaling $120 using a credit card which offers 2% cashback on all purchases, you should expect to earn a bonus of $2.40, which would be added to your cashback pool associated with this credit card. Please hold on to this example because we're gonna reference it again. You may later withdraw all the funds sitting in your cashback pool, but I recommend that all newbies should just let their pool grow because there are often better uses than withdrawing the funds for cash. However, be sure to subscribe to this channel because I show in many other videos how to effectively use funds growing in your cashback pool. So what about points? Some credit cards opt to offer points instead of cashback, which is represented by an X symbol known as a multiplier. So if a credit card offers 2X on all purchases, and we take our example of spending $120 at a supermarket, you may expect to earn a bonus of 240 points, which is added to your pool of points associated with the card. Credit cards which offer points tend to have more flexibility in how you redeem your points. In general, you may use your points to purchase flights or hotel stays, or even transfer the points to your favorite hotel or airline partner. You may come across here on YouTube references to team cashback or team travel. I'm an avid traveler, so I tend to gravitate towards credit cards which allow me to earn points on all of my purchases so that I may book flights or hotel stays. I often book free flights using my points, and I earn many free hotel stays with my favorite hotel partner, Hilton. Folks, I don't just review credit cards, I actually travel using the value that I get from them. If you wanna learn how to do this, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Go ahead. 
section two, strategic planning when applying for credit cards. This is the world I live in. Now that we've level set what is meant by cashback earning credit cards versus points earning credit cards, we can use this knowledge to inform which credit cards to apply for. Recall that I started out with a gap card and I was able to earn credits towards future gap purchases. However, that was way too limiting. It's best to acquire credit cards which offer rewards in the categories which you often spend on. If you're a younger person, you're likely interested in credit cards which offer bonuses on concerts, movies, fast food, dining out, and supermarket purchases. I urge you to skip the impulse to acquire store credit cards. You're better off acquiring credit cards from major issuers like Capital One, American Express, Chase, Citi, and Wells Fargo because they offer broader categories for earning cashback or points. And you need to select credit cards which fit your lifestyle. The credit card market is highly competitive, which is great for consumers like us. They must offer value, else consumers aren't going to be interested, so be sure to pick the cards that work for you. You may expect to receive credit card offers in the mail touting earning cashback or points in very specific categories like supermarkets, dining, like restaurants and fast food, gas, online streaming services like Netflix, entertainment, pharmacies, transit, and the list goes on. So it's essential that you're intentional in your credit card acquisition. As a young person, you're likely not interested in credit cards which offer rewards on pharmacy spend, but you're more likely to care about rewards offered for your Netflix or Hulu subscriptions. If you reside in a city, you're likely interested in credit cards which offer rewards on transit and dining. There are some credit cards which ignore specific categories and offer rewards on all purchases. Those are generally referred to as catch-all cards. In our running example of the credit cards which offers 2% or 2x on all spend, that would qualify as a catch-all credit card. Section three, why begin with Capital One cards? Now that you've made it through section one and section two, you're positioned to apply for your first credit card. Before we go any further, everything that I'm about to say hinges on the R Square Travel Rewards principles. Treat your credit card like a debit card, which means don't spend money that you don't have. Pay your credit card statement off in full each month, avoid paying fees and interest, and subscribe to this channel. Okay, the fourth one's not really a principle, but it's important guidance. If you already own store credit cards, no worries. You may still move forward with acquiring the cards that I'm about to recommend. Just put your store cards away. Put them at the back of your sock drawer. I enthusiastically recommend the Capital One Quicksilver and the Capital One Saver One. They're both cashback cards and given that they're both Capital One cards, you may combine them into one cashback pool, which is super easy to do on their website. Each of these cards target different use cases. Let me explain. The Capital One Saver One has a $0 annual fee. It offers different cashback percentages depending on your purchase category. It offers 3% cashback on all purchases made in these categories. Supermarkets, dining, which you may think of as restaurants, fast food, and coffee shops. Select entertainment. The list is too long to mention, which is good for you. Here it is. Streaming. Think Netflix, Hulu, and Disney+. Plus. And the Saver One offers 8% on Capital One Entertainment which are events sponsored or promoted by Capital One. To earn this 8% cash back, you must purchase through the Capital One Entertainment section of the website. And the earnings continue where you can earn 5% cash back on hotels and car rentals when you purchase them through the Capital One Travel section of the Capital One website. On all other purchases made with a Saver One, you may expect to earn 1% cash back. However, I prefer that you not settle for 1% cashback, which leads us to the Quicksilver card. The Capital One Quicksilver card, which has a $0 annual fee, offers 1.5% cashback on all purchases. So when you need to make a purchase which doesn't fit into the 3%, 5%, or 8% categories of the Saver One, the Quicksilver should be used, which guarantees a 1.5% cashback on those purchases. But Richard, that's only 0.5% more than the Saver One. Does that really make a difference? Yes, it does. In my book, 1.5% is always better than 1% because it adds up over time. Neither of these cards have foreign transaction fees. So if you're fortunate enough to travel abroad and you need to make a purchase, you can take comfort in knowing that no foreign transaction fees will be applied. As an FYI, the 3% cashback on supermarkets and dining still apply in foreign countries. 
Guys, that's a pro move, that you not only earn points at home to travel abroad, but that when you're abroad, you're still earning points. Just because you're a beginner doesn't mean that you can't do what the pros do. Both the Capital One, Saver One, and Quicksilver are currently offering a $200 bonus for new card holders when they spend $500 within three months. I'll include referral links to these cards in the description and on my website, boomacompany.com. Your support allows me to continue making this type of content. On to section four, why avoid chase cards as a starter setup? Chase loyalists dislike it when there's any shade thrown at chase. But before you come at me, there is a time and a place for chase cards, but your starter set of cards is not a use case for chase. I said it, I said it. Chase's two intro cards, the Freedom Unlimited and the Freedom Flex, have foreign transaction fees. So if you're a college student and you head off for spring break overseas or take a family vacation and those are your only two cards, you'll be crushed by foreign transaction fees with each purchase. One of the tenets of this channel is to avoid paying all types of credit card fees. But Richard, the foreign transaction fees are only 3%. Folks, here is a dirty secret regarding bank credit cards. The benefits enjoyed by folks like me are paid for by folks who incur fees and interests. Remember that banks are inherently evil. They seek to gouge you with fees and interest. And it doesn't matter if you've been a loyal customer for 10 years. Check out this video here. Paying even a 3% fee wipes out all the benefit you were supposed to get from the card. Additionally, the Chase Freedom cards have unnecessary overlapping categories and the Freedom Flex in particular requires card management to take advantage of changing quarterly bonus categories which most credit card users are not interested in doing. Once you own my two recommended Capital One cards for a while and you develop awesome credit card habits of paying your statement in full each month, a case may be then made for the Chase cards in phase two of your credit card journey. Depending on on how many cards you wish to own. Section five, the bonus strategy. I'm talking about the built MasterCard, which is a free card. I've officially concluded that as of filming this video, that the built MasterCard is the most valuable card in the credit card space. Let's put this in context. I own most of the premium luxury cards and pay over $3,300 in annual fees just for these cards. And I consider the free built MasterCard as the most valuable card on the market. Oh, and it's a metal card. I still need my premium cards because I execute advanced credit card strategies towards my free travel. The more cards I own, the more recommendations I'm able to give. I won't get into the outsized value which is offered by the built card because you're a beginner and those concepts are likely too advanced. However, I invite you to watch this built video and this one on the off chance that some of the concepts will resonate. In the meantime, given that you're a newbie to credit cards, you're likely renting. In that case, you ought to apply for the built MasterCard. Some of you might be living at home and think that you don't pay rent. However, if you contribute anything towards your household, you're considered renting. The pro tip here is that you should apply for the built card and use it to pay your parents, i.e. landlord, which will allow you to earn built points. The built MasterCard is the only card on the market which allows you to pay rent and earn valuable points without incurring transaction fees. If you're not sure what that means, here's an illustration. Landlords who allow tenants to pay their rent by credit card usually add on around a 3% fee. If your rent is $2,000 a month, your credit card will be charged $2,000 plus 3% or a $60 fee, totaling $2,060, which is an extra $720 in fees over a one-year lease. Remember the R squared travel principle number three? Avoid paying fees and interest, unless you're executing an advanced concept. However, if you were to use the Built card to charge your rent, Built provides you with an account and routing number, which you may use, and Built will eat any credit card fees assessed to you. And in the off chance that you pay your rent with a check, Built is prepared to mail a check to your landlord on your behalf. In both scenarios, there are no fees, and you will earn valuable Built points equal to the amount of the rent payment transaction. In addition to paying rent with a Built card, there are other purchase categories which allow you to earn bonus points. You earn 3x points on dining, think restaurants, fast food, and coffee shops, 2x points on travel purchases through the Built Online portal, 1x points on rent, and 1x points on all other purchases. On the first of every month, Built has introduced a term called Rent Day, where the points in all the categories but rent are doubled, yielding 6x on dining, 4x on travel, 2x on all other purchases but rent, 
which is fixed at 1x. There are other features to the built card, which I invite you to watch here. Given that the goal of this video is to get you started without getting overwhelmed. An important call out is that built requires a minimum of five transactions per month to earn your points. Assuming that you'll make one transaction by paying rent, you'll need four additional purchases on the card. You may make those purchases using the categories just mentioned, or you may just buy a soda, a bottle of water, chips, and two packs of gum as individual transactions actions from a convenience store. Again, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the built card. There is so much more value. So check out the other built videos on this channel. Okay. So here's a summary of the three cards, which I recommend all beginners should acquire. I wish someone shared something similar with me when I started off on my credit card journey. You should select cards which work for your lifestyle and this chart illustrates the most popular categories for younger folks. So if you have a Netflix account or eat food, <laughs> you need the saver one. If you pay rent at all, you need the built card. By the way, this card setup may also serve as a travel setup, which I'll get into in another video. So be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching until the end. Since you've gotten this far, it only makes sense to like, share and subscribe to help give this channel some visibility. As always, take care and be good to each other.